holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my reminder. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are thankful and grateful, even though we got plenty of snow outside. Uh, the Lord has been good to us. Amen. And has allowed us to come together on another first Sunday. For those of you that are home, uh, we ask that you prepare your Holy Communion so that when we get to that part, you will be ready to partake with us. Amen. Let us now begin with Pass Me Not. Thank you, Lord. This is the one I meant when I said 
a man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. I have read to you John chapter 1, starting at verse 26 through verse 31. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers, seekers, and doers of his holy word. Amen. Amen. Jesus is 
how about we keep Jesus in our pocket? Every day. And at this time, Pastor, are there any announcements at this time? Okay, we're going to move right along. At this time, we're going to have a song. Is that one prepared?
you were still bought. Yes, yes, yes. And at this time, I would like for everyone to stand right where you are. And as you are standing, before the word of God, go forward. I would like for you to raise your right hand. And I want you to say, Dr. Robertson, Dr. Robertson. Preach the word. Preach the word. Preach the word. Preach the word. Dr. Robertson. Dr. Robertson. And at this time, we will have our own pastor, the overseer of this house. Yeah, man. Dr. Gaither Robertson. Amen. 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 Oh, yes. Amen. Thank you. That's too uh
familiar chapter, one of the synoptics. Luke chapter 22 and verse number 20. Luke chapter 22 and verse number 20. Here's what you'll find recorded there. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new cup testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Let's talk about this thought today covered with the blood. Amen. Now, if I was down around Palestine and the majestic wonders were in the house, at this point I would break out on a song called Under the Blood, an old quartet song that we used to sing. Give us a little bit. Uh, but since uh, it's been about 30 years since I did that song, so I ain't going to even fool myself like I remember. <laughs> We're going to just look at this a little bit. And if I get a little long with it, uh, you might have to pour my coattail. Sorry, right, 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 right. 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 Without a doubt, the blood of Jesus Christ is the most precious gift our Heavenly Father has given His church. Uh -huh. yeah. Yet so few Christians seem to understand the value of the blood. Well, not only is it valuable, but it also has a virtue. Christians often sing about the power of the blood. Yes. Indeed, the anthem of the Pentecostal church is there is power, 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 power wonder working power, power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Yeah, yeah. In the Baptist church, we sing the blood will never lose. Never. Yes, yes. But most believers seldom enter into the power of the blood. We simply just don't comprehend the great significance of the blood. For example, we constantly plead the blood. I know I made some folks mad talking about pleading the blood because I told them y'all 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 want to talk about pleading the blood just like it's some kind of magical formula. Yeah. Like a, a monk, or these magicians are saying hocus pocus. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Abracadabra. Yeah, yeah. It ain't that kind of pleading. Yeah. yeah. For a few Christians, we they know the 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 benefit of the blood, but. A lot of Christians cannot explain its great glory nor its benefit. Uh -huh. There's power in the blood. Yes. Uh -huh. And you are covered yeah. under the blood if you are born again. Yeah. Come on, Chris. If I were to ask you what the power of the blood means, I would get all kinds of answers. Right, right. It means that sin has been remitted. Yeah. And that I'm free from sin and the bondage of its iniquity. Right. That all my sins are covered. Right. Yet beyond forgiveness, what does the blood of Jesus mean to you? Uh -huh. yes, sir. Can you explain to me? Can you explain to your family? Can you explain to your co-worker yeah. the virtues of the blood of Jesus? Uh -huh. I want to give you a full understanding of the precious blood of Jesus. And how it can work wonders in your life. Right. The wonderful change that the blood brings to your life. Yeah. In scripture, the blood is spoken of in two ways. Blood shed and blood sprinkled. Right. Most Christians know about the blood shed yeah. for us. Yeah. When Jesus lifted the cup yeah. at the Passover and said, take this. And drink it. Yeah. Drink this here, because this is this is my blood, uh -huh. which is shed for you. you. This is the 
cup of the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. We can memorialize his sacrifice every time we have our communion. But that is the limit of most of Christians' knowledge of Jesus' blood. We know only that the blood being shed and not about the blood being sprinkled. That's why I say some of y'all say it's nasty. I don't want no blood on me. The first biblical reference to the sprinkling of the blood is in Exodus 12 and 22. Okay. The Israelites were commanded to take a bunch of hyssop, yeah. dip it in the blood of a slain lamb, and sprinkle it on the lintel and the two sides of the door. Yeah. That night when the death angel came and saw the blood on the doorpost, he went on his way. Fast over. Hallelujah. Go to the next house. Yeah. You see any blood here? Yeah, there's some blood up there. Keep on rolling. Yeah. Well, if you want Satan huh. to not be victorious over you, uh -huh. you got to have some blood yeah, yeah, sprinkled yeah. on you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The blood in Exodus 12 is a type of the blood of Christ. Yes. The blood that flows from Calvary was not wasted. It did not fall to the ground and disappear. Right, right, right. No, I believe that that blood, that precious blood is collected in a heavenly fountain. Yes, and sinners can plunge beneath that flood yes. and lose all their guilty stain. Yes. There's a gospel song that says there is a fountain filled with blood. And sinners plunge beneath that flood. They lose everything about their guilt. Right. You walk around here feeling guilty about stuff you did five years ago. Right. It's over with. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Yes, you did it. Now all of us did something. All of us are ex something. Come on, man. I used to do a whole lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Don't do it no more. Don't tell her. Don't even, whole lot of it, don't even think about it no more. Right. Sometimes there are some certain situations and I look around and I, I look at folk and I say, it used to be. Yeah, yeah. Right. Had you done that to me? Yeah, yeah. come on, You'd come on. You'd be wondering, come what's on. wrong with that guy? Come on. Why he jump on me like that? Yeah. Right. But the old days are behind. Yes, Forgetting those things which are behind. Yes, I pray. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. If Christ is Lord of your life, then your doorpost, your heart, has been sprinkled with the blood. Thank you, Lord. And this sprinkling is not for forgiveness only. Uh -huh. It's also for protection. Yes. You need to be protected. I've got alarms on windows and doors because uh -huh. I want to feel protected. All right, sir. If I'm in there and you're trying to get in without permission, I want to know you're trying to get in. Yeah. And believe me, some of those alarms, uh, when they go off accidentally, they scare you so bad you wonder why I got that thing on there in the first place. Come on, preacher. <laughs> but if you try to get in, it will let me know somebody is trying to enter. Uh -huh. I even got it so I even got a little system that I, I bought and I hooked up. If I'm away from the house, it gives me a little notice on my phone to say somebody at your front door. Uh -huh. And I can look and see who it is. All right. If you're leaving a packet, uh, just who it is. If it's somebody, if I'm inside the house and I hear that signal and if somebody at the door I don't want to be bothered with, I just stay in the back. Watch out, man. <laughs> Wait till they leave. Then look out there and see that they leave anything. If they didn't leave nothing, I might open the door and try to figure out who it was. <laughs> Make sure they don't leave nothing on the door. But I am protected. Thank you, Lord. All right. You are protected. Yes, sir. When you are sprinkled. You are totally under the protection of Christ's blood. Against all 
destroying powers of Satan. You are under Jesus' protection. When his forces see, when Satan's forces see Christ's blood on your door, they have to pass over. They can't touch it. You ever see how say it can't touch it? That's right, that's right. You are protected because they can't touch you if you've been sprinkled with the blood of Christ. Beloved, I want you to know today that we are in a new covenant with Jesus. Yeah. A covenant sealed by his own blood. Yeah. That 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 sprinkling is on your soul. And it's also for the purpose of communion. Yeah. So that you can fellowship with the Lord. It's also so that you can boldly come before Christ. Oh. You can come with ease and without fear of judgment. Yeah. Because God don't hold your past sins against you. Well, well, well. We only look at where you are right now. Thank you. Right now you're in communion with me. Yeah. I've forgiven your past sins. Well, Thank you, I've forgiven your past iniquities. Yeah. Now you are in the presence of the Lord. Yeah. With no sins condemning you, you can feel free to tell God all about your struggle. Yes, sir. You can dwell in his company. Because right. you have been forgiven of your past sins. How the blood of Jesus sprinkled upon your heart. The blood of Jesus is sprinkled upon your heart by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells within you. Right. The Spirit was on me. No, if the Spirit don't need to be on you, it need to be in you. It need to be inside you. need to be guiding your thoughts needs to be directing your footsteps. Yeah. It needs to be in you. Yeah. Is there any good thing in yeah. Nazareth? Yeah. yeah, that was a good thing in Nazareth. They called Jesus Christ. Yeah. Right Jesus sprinkles his own blood on us by, by our faith. Yeah. We receive his finished work at Calvary by faith. Yeah. Yeah. This isn't a physical sprinkling but it is a legal sprinkling. You're spiritually, it's a spiritual transaction. He sprinkled his blood on your heart in response to your faith. When you reached out and said, I believe that he died for me, okay. The transaction is taking place. When that transaction take place, takes place, you find out that there's power in the blood of Jesus. And until we truly believe that there is power in the sacrifice at Calvary, the blood of Jesus cannot produce and affect our souls as it was designed to do. Whom God has set forth to be a perpetuation, a reconciliation through faith in his blood. Romans 3 and 20 Five tells us that if God did it for us, yes, sir. then it's done. Yes, Church around here, we need to take partake of the communion more than we normally do. Well, well. Communion is something that we need to have regularly. Yes, That's why we try to do it every first Sunday. A lot of times we want to talk about when we read the scripture and it says, whosoever eat and drink, I'm worthy of that. He didn't drink a damnation unto himself. Yeah. But that's really not what he's talking about. Uh -huh. I need to ask the question at this point. Who in here is without sin? Right. All right, now. We all have sin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Come short of the glory that's of God. Right. That's, yes, right. sir. that's not what makes you unworthy to partake of the Lord's Supper. Uh -huh. That's not what prevents you from, from, from being cleared by the blood of the Lamb. I believe what Paul was talking about is when you come to the table okay. and you partake of the Lord's Supper yes, sir. and you don't believe in the power of the blood, uh, that's when you're taking it unworthy. Okay, when you don't believe that there's power in the blood, okay, you don't believe that the blood has the power to make you walk right down. Uh -huh. It don't have the power to make you talk right. Don't have the power to make you 
live right. Don't have the power to make you love everybody. Don't have the power to make you live sinless as possible. That's when it's on the way. I believe it's got the power to do it. Everything. I believe it makes me a better person. Yes, sir. Blood of Jesus is sprinkled on my soul yes, through the through Holy Ghost preaching. Yes, sir. What you talking about, Holy Ghost? I'm talking about Holy Ghost preaching. Yes, I ain't talking about all this foolishness a lot of these folk coming up with now. I ain't talking about a whole lot of prophesizing and a proper life. I'm talking about Holy Ghost preaching. Preach the word. What the book say? The book say. That's Holy Ghost preaching. Yes, sir. And when you do that Holy Ghost preaching, somebody's life, somebody's life. will be changed. That's right, that's right. That's right. Well, one thing about the gospel, it'll do one or two things. It'll either draw you out or it'll drive you. Yes, sir. You'll say, I ain't going back there no more. Something wrong with them folks in that old church. Or it'll, it'll make you feel like I got to do better. Yeah. I, I can't go keep going like I've been going. I got to do better. Well, you don't want to hear Holy Ghost preaching because you want something that's going to tickle your ear. Yeah. 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 Come on, Pastor. Tell me. Tell it. Tell it. Good preaching tickles my ear. Yeah. When somebody is telling the gospel story and telling it like it's wrote in the book. Yeah. Well, let me rephrase that. When they tell it like it's written in the book, it tickles my heart. When you hear how Christ died, I don't care what you know. That's your heart being sprinkled yeah. with the blood. Yeah. At this point, I'm wondering how many of you know that the blood has power. I know. Yeah. How many of you can say the blood has been applied to your heart? Uh -huh. There are three ways you can get sprinkled with the blood. Uh -huh. If you're now willing to walk in the light. Yeah. And allow the power of the Holy Ghost yes, sir. to direct you out of darkness. Yes, you can say that you're walking under the blood. Yeah. That you're living under the blood. Yeah. When John in 1 John 1 and 7 talked about whosoever walk in the light in it. He is in the light in yeah. You have fellowship one with another. Yeah. And the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleansed you from all sin. You see, you know you've been sprinkled with the blood yeah. when you are walking in the light yes, and you're fellowshipping with one another. Yeah. You see, uh, too many Christians can't fellowship with one another because you can't stand one another. How can you not stand one another when you got to live with one another? You got to praise with one another. Yeah. You got to lift up Jesus with one another. Yeah. And there's strength in our unity. Yeah. Not in disunity, but in our unity. Yeah. And they'll know that you are one of his disciples because you have love for one another. Yeah. If you cannot acknowledge the power of Jesus Christ. Then the enemy will attack you and defeat you, but as long as you're under the blood, yeah. as long as you've been sprinkled yeah. under the blood, yeah. you don't have to worry about the enemy attacking you, because you still got the protection of the blood. In other words, you got the whole arm on. Please. 
need no blood. When you've been sprinkled with the blood, you're not in a courtroom. You don't have to prove nothing to the devil. You just have to let him know I belong to God. And since you belong to God, you are beneath his wing. And those that hold in his right hand, the devil in hell can't harm. You've been cleansed with the power of the blood. The devil can't condemn you no more. Because you've been sprinkled with the blood. I believe in Jesus Christ. Anybody in here today? Jesus Christ. Anybody in here know you are? Know you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. The song said, Redeemed. I've been redeemed. I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Yeah. I've been washed in the blood. I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. The same lamb that died out on Calvary. The same lamb that went up that hill. Let him put nails in his hand. Let him put rivets in his feet. That same lamb, when he got up down that hill, looked up and said, Father, forgive them, Father. They don't know what they're doing. That same lamb that hung right out there from the sixth to the ninth hour hung there till the sun stopped shining, hung there till the moon dipped down in dust, hung there till the earth reeled and rocked, hung right out there till a warm rain set up. Trying 
What are our great privileges and duties in this, our own church? To strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrine. What vows do we gladly make as stewards of that which God has entrusted to us? To contribute truthfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the sins of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. For the sake of our homes and our loved ones, what gracious tasks do we humbly assume? We also engage to maintain family and secret devotions, to religiously educate our children, and to teach them the salvation of our friends and acquaintances. For the sake of the unsaved for whom our Savior died, in what manner of life and conversation are we solemnly and sincerely pledged? To walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and temporary in our deportment, to avoid all tabling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and use of intoxicated drink and beverage, to be zealous in our efforts for the best of the kingdom of our Savior. Since one is our master, yeah. even Christ, yeah. and all we are brethren, by what fraternal ministries are we to strengthen each other and adorn the teachings of our Lord and Savior? We further engage one over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, and to call upon God in our sympathy and family. And courtesy and speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure the godly way. Let us read together. Humbly confessing our past sins, we pray for grace and strength to keep these our holy vows for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Father God, we come before you right now saying thank you. Amen. Father, we thank you for waking us this morning. Father. Yes. Yes. Father, many did not wake. Some some of them bed was their cooling board this morning. Yeah, well, well. But yes, you gave us one more time. Yeah, thank you. Thank and Father, we ask as we take this communion, Father, let it be in remembrance of you. Yes. Let us be mindful of what you did for us on Calvary. In your son Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. And at this time we're going to take a minute. Like they used to do in the old days. I want you to take a minute and ask for forgiveness and silence. Before you take this communion. Let us bow our heads in silence. <laughs> amen and amen. <laughs> and now the hands of the deacons and the deaconesses.
our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Remembering how his body was broken and his blood was shed for the remission of sin. As we eat and drink, let us remember how he died to save our soul.